pixel math. The perfect process for you if PixInsight and astrophotography as a whole is not yet complex enough for you. I would say there are three groups when it comes to pixel math. It's the people who completely ignore it. It's the people who know it for this is the process to actually move the stars back into the picture. And then there's Bill Blanchin, who actually writes cool scripts in pixel math while eating breakfast and watching Netflix at the same time. All kidding beside, it's probably the most complex but also the most powerful process within PixInsight. And today, we have a close look at it. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So just before we go into PixInsight and look at it in depth, what is pixel math? In principle, it's really easy. You have two pictures consist out of pixels. Now let's assume you put both pictures on top of each other and you point at the same pixel for both pictures. And in the middle, you put in an operator, plus, minus. And with that, you get to a result. And this result is the end picture. And we obviously don't do that only for one pixel. We do it for all the pixels of the picture at the same time. And in this tutorial, which is coming now, there's actually a lot of things, formulas and so on, you might want to have in a written form. And you can have that as a nice PDF on my Patreon channel. Link is in the description below. With that, let's go into PixInsight and have a good look at this mystery. Okay, so welcome on my computer and we're already in PixInsight. I'm now opening Pixel Math. Let's look at this curious window from the start. On top here, we have, first of all, this default tab RGBK. So we use this when we want to impact the pixel in its whole, all the channel, everything. And if you actually unselect here, use a single RGBK expression, they come to life. Then this here, the RGB gets to red, and we have green and blue, and the alpha channel, which is in principle how transparent, how opaque a picture is. For the moment, we use the pixels as a whole. Then we have the expression editor. We will look at that in a second. We can open up here to get more stuff. Everything in here you can leave as it is. You will probably never have to change that. What's interesting again is this here. We can either replace the target image. So the image, we for example, drop the triangle on, or we can create a new image. Both has advantages and disadvantages. Create new image means if we use already pictures here on the screen to combine, then it will actually create an additional one, which is then the result. But we can also start from scratch. And this is what we will do right now. Below we can actually give a specific image ID if we want, or we can leave it at auto. So now we come here to the image width and the image height. Usually you would leave it as target. In this case, because we want to create a new picture, we have to define it. We can say we make it 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels high. Color space, for this example, we can take whatever we want. Let's take at the moment just grayscale. Sample format, usually also you would leave it same as target, but here we have actually to enter something. We can choose 16 bit on 30 or 32 bit, doesn't matter at all. So now let's see how the whole thing works is every pixel is defined by a number between zero and one. Zero is completely dark, one is completely white, and then everything in between. So I go on here on RGB, I go on zero, I press the global button, and I get a black square. And if I go on there, you can also see that here on the bottom, that the K is zero. So let's try that with a one to prove that it's true what I said. And we get a white square. And the K is now 65, 535. And that's the maximum brightness value that we can get. So that's true too. So let's try 0.5, right in the middle, we get a gray. And if we check that, we are at 32,000, so right in the middle. So that's true too. And I think you will believe me that whatever else <laughs> I enter here, I get these results. 
So now we already know what these numbers 1 to 0 actually mean. So now let's prove that actually this is true what I've told you at the beginning with the calculation so that it's so simple. So if we have two pictures and we want now to average it, this is 0 plus 1 divided by 2 should give 0.5, correct? So let's try that out to see how it works. I could obviously enter now image 01. This is my identifier here. Okay, then I say plus. Now I could add image 02, but if I don't want to do that, I just go here in the expression editor. And here I have all the images available at the moment. So I just ensure that I'm right at the end here. I click on image 02 and it's done. I say okay and we have it in here. Now I have to divide it by 2. Now as we all know division has priority in math so we have to put brackets around here divided by 2. Now I put the global button again and let's check we are at 32,000 so exactly like here where we actually ended 0.5 so the math seems to work. And that's in a very primitive way, a first explanation how pixel math works. So now I know we all like 50 shades of gray, but color is still nicer. So let's bring out a little bit color in our lives. So let's delete that. And I unselect now this tick box. And obviously here at the color space, I have now also to change to RGB color. Okay, so let's stay here in the same field as before. And I enter here a one, press the global button and we get a red square and if you go on it we're again at the 65,000 by red if you see by the R. If I enter here 0.5 I get a darker red square and we're at 32,000. So again seems to work. I delete it here now, I go to green, let's do a 1 and we get green and just to complete that let's go to blue and we have a blue one. Okay so now we know what these are doing. Now what if I enter a green a 1 and a red I enter a 1, 2. Let's execute and we get yellow. And if I go on it, you see that now red and green has the maximum value of 65,000. So you see, I can actually mix colors here, which is cool. But it's also important that we always remember we have to delete here everything to be clean again. If we forget something in one of these fields, it will influence our calculations. There is something else we have to be really careful when we work with these. They only use this color channel. What do I mean by that? Let's take now here the image 09 and I put it in red. And now I press the execution button. And what I get out of here is a red square. And if we go on it, we see that only the red has received the full color of this here but not the green which was also in here. And that is just something that you have to remember if you're using RGB pictures and you enter them into one of these boxes only the applicable channel will be used. Everything else will be ignored. That might be something you intend but if you don't intend it, it still happens. So with that let's look a bit closer on this expression editor. Here I have in principle the same things again, red, green, blue. I have up here all the images that I have at the moment on my workspace. And below here I have all the available formulas. These are functions which you might have seen in math programs. These are some generators, in principle some commands. These are the usual operators, punctuators like brackets. And if you don't want to know what any of these are, you just have to click on that and it tells you, for example, ABS, apps, absolute value of X. And here in the symbol definitions, I have commands like the mean, the median. So for example, I have here the mean and I could do with it obviously the same as I did at the start. And it explains here even what I have to do. I simply have to take the mean bracket, then I say image one, comma, image two, bracket closed. I say, okay, I execute it. Now obviously it's in the red one, but if you look at it, we're again at the 32,000. That's not taken out of these two. And also that, by the way, is crucial. If we're here at the red channel and we enter something, a grayscale, it will take actually the brightness of the grayscale pixel and transform it into red. And that's how we do color combination in pixel math. And with that, I think it's time that we stop playing around with colors and we start actually to take 
real pictures. For the second part now, we use the narrowband images of the Omega Nebula. So we have HA, O3, S2, and I already have here the stars. But these pictures are not stretched yet. So let's first actually do a regular SHO combination as you would do in the channel combination tool. So what did we learn? We take here this selection away. Then we go into the expression editor. We say red is S, green is H, and blue is O, SHO. We say okay. We ensure that create new images here. And then we actually have to change here the color space because these are grayscale pictures, but the new one is not as target, but obviously it has to be RGB color. Then we throw the triangle on one of the picture, doesn't matter which one. We wait for a second and here is our combined picture. Now you might say, but this is exactly the same as channel combination. So why should I do it here? One reason why you could decide to do it here is because here you can modify. You could say, I really like green, so I want to push actually the HA more. No problem with that. We go here to green, HA times, for example, let's try 1.1. We again put the triangle on one of the original pictures, wait for a second, and everything definitely shifted now more on the green side. Now to be clear, I don't say you should do that. I just wanted to show you the effects. So you have full controllability. Now this was a very easy example, but let's actually show you to which extent we can go. If I put this formula in here, this formula in here, and here stay with O3, and I execute it, I get a forex kind of view. But you might say, wait, 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 what, what was that? Let's look at this formula. And I haven't invented this, I also copied this. But anyway, let's have a look at this because you see these symbols a lot in the formulas we use. So the easiest way, if you're confused, what, what is this for a sign here? Let's go in the expression editor. So here we can actually look at these formulas in detail. So for example, you don't know what this here is. You go here to operators, scroll down, here it is, exponential operator. Or you don't know what this squiggly sign here is, which you also encounter a lot. You have that here, and that's the pixel inversion operator. And just because we use this a lot, and it might still not be clear what it is, let's have a look at it. Let's go here for a moment to RGB. And let's take for example the O3. And now I put this little squiggly sign in front here and I just throw it here on the O3. And you see what it has done? It has inverted the picture. So in principle, what it does is, let's say a value is 0.2. What it does is it does a one minus before that. One minus 0.2 two is 0.8. So it's much brighter. So what was rather dark at the beginning is now very bright. So all this quickly sign is, is just an inversion of each and every pixel. So in the meantime, I stretched the picture and you see that also now, if you look down below here at the numbers that they're now much, much bigger. They go up to 44,000, which is about 70% until the maximum. So let's see now what we can do in this situation with pixel math. For example, we can just make it a little bit darker. I think we see that nicely. In the same way, obviously, I still have the potential to make it brighter. But we can actually do better. And the great part is that pixel math understands conditional statements. The if function, it's like with any other program language, Excel, only with pixel mass, the if has two eyes, why ever? But it's also first you actually enter the condition, comma, then what is true, and then what if it's not true. And if you wonder how I know all that, you go into expression editor, if, and it tells you that here. So really, the expression editor is your friend. So what this actually does here is it says, we protect the background, we don't want to have it brighter, but if it's above 0.6, so it's in the top 40% of brightness, then actually increase the brightness and otherwise just leave it like it is. We throw that on here and you nicely see that here, nothing changed at all, but actually our Omega Nebula got much brighter. Obviously I have to be careful here that we do not blow it out, but here we're still okay-ish. So that's one thing we could do. 
we can obviously very easily turn this around and say, well, if the pixel is in the lowest 30%, we want to have it darker, for example, or brighter, whatever, you know, whatever you want. And that's what happened here. You see here, the darker part, it got now really dark. There's still a lot of noise in here, but, but just, just to show, just as a demonstration. So there's some pretty cool stuff which you can actually do with pixel math. And if you leave the intimidation behind you and you really start to explore the functions here in the expression editor, everything is really nicely explained and you could do some really cool stuff. So last but not least, let's look at the star integration. We have here our stars and we have here the starless picture. So let's look at it now also a little bit in detail because what is really popular to do is just starless plus stars. Now, why is this not a good idea? The issue is if we look around here, we're at up to 11, 20,000. So this is already a third of the brightness that we have. Now the stars, they might be very close to the maximum. And if we add this up, there's a very high chance that we get above one. And as soon as we get above one, we blow them out. And in the same way is if there is a little bit of halo around the stars, which is included here, and it adds up here the brightness of the background, then the halo will be way too strong and it will look really, really ugly. And that's the issue why you never, ever, ever should actually use this formula for integrating the stars. So we have here this formula, which you probably, or I hope so, you already know, but now you also start to understand what it actually does with the wiggliness. So we're actually inverting the starless pictures and we're also inverting the stars. Then we're multiplying it and at the end, we're obviously inverting the whole picture again. And that's the whole magic behind this formula. So obviously I have to adjust it now to my names here and then I can throw it somewhere and it will create the picture with the stars. Now there's one last thing which I already mentioned in another video but it's really important so I want to mention that again. Because what sometimes what I like to do is I like to mask the nebula that we do not have the stars at the brightest parts of the nebula that it's not disturbing here. Here it's not that bad but anyway, for the sake of it, let's try that. So I did create now a mask with range selection, just very fast. Enter it here. We want to invert it. Okay, so this is now protected. Now that I have masked it, let's throw it in here. And what you can easily see is that it didn't do anything at all because you still have the stars here as before. So what's wrong? There is a special rule when you use masks. The masks will only apply, first of all, if I throw the triangle in the picture with the mask. So I cannot throw it here. I have to throw it in here, but I did that. But the other condition is strangely that I have to replace the image. With a new image, it doesn't work. So I have to go on replace target image. If I do it now, you see nicely that the stars were blocked here where the nebula is and only where there's no nebula, the stars were integrated. So that's something very important to remember. So we made it. <laughs> I hope you're still conscious <laughs> and you got something out of it. If you want to keep up to date on tutorials like that, please hit the subscribe button. See you next time and clear skies.